hi everyone my name is tandy welcome to my youtube channel this is part two of electromagnetism in part one we discussed how a current carrying conductor creates a, a magnetic field and we also spoke about how to determine the direction of the current and the magnetic field using the right hand rule for both a straight wire and a solenoid i would suggest that you first watch that video i will leave the link to part one in the video description in this lesson we are going to be talking about one how current can be induced by a changing magnetic field two the magnetic flux three faraday's law of electromagnetic induction four direction of the induced current in a straight wire using the right hand rule and five the direction of the induced current in a solenoid using the right hand rule as well <clears throat> and lastly we're going to be talking about real life application of electromagnetic induction in this very busy slide of mine what we are looking at is a bar magnet showing the north pole represented by the letter n and the south pole represented by the letter s around the bar magnet we have magnetic field lines the field lines appear to be emerging or coming out of the north pole and moving towards the south pole so you see the direction of the arrow at the north pole is pointing away whereas the direction of the arrow at the north pole is pointing toward towards the south pole just below the magnet we have a wire forming a rectangular shaped loop that is connected to an ammeter an ammeter is a device that measures the current and its symbol is the circle with a letter a inside the question becomes, why are we interested in measuring the current when the wire is not connected to a battery or power source? How can current flow in this circuit? The answer to that is, when we move the bar magnet up and down, our ammeter will actually measure a current flowing in the wire. But how is this possible for our ammeter to detect a current when the wire is clearly not connected to a battery? When we move that bar magnet up and down, we... <clears throat> We are changing the magnetic field and this change in magnetic field induces a current in the wire. By changing, I mean that when you move the, map, the bar magnet closer to the loop of wire, the magnetic field increases in strength. And when you move it away, the magnetic field decreases in strength. So we can all agree that the strength of the magnetic field is essentially changing by that act of moving it up and down. This means that if you were to just put the bar magnet next to the loop, your ammeter would not measure a current. For a current to be induced in this wire loop, the magnetic field has to be changing. A magnetic field that is changing is called the magnetic flux. So if we have a change in magnetic field through the loop of wire, we say that we have a magnetic flux in that, in that loop. We actually have an equation in physical sciences that defines the magnetic flux, and that is the equation that you see on your screen. So the magnetic flux is a product of the magnetic field represented by the letter B, the area of the loop represented by the letter A, and the, and the cosine of theta, of the angle theta. When we calculate the area of the loop of wire, we have to use the area of the shape it forms. In the last slide, we saw that the loop of wire formed a rectangular shape. So to calculate the area of the loop, we would use the area of a rectangle. I hope that is clear. The other important thing to make mention of in this magnetic flux equation is the angle theta. The angle theta is the angle between the direction of the magnetic field vector and the normal. So when we talk about the normal, we're talking about something that is perpendicular to. So the angle between the magnetic field B and the normal to our wire loop, which has an area of A. I'm going to explain that angle further in the next couple of slides, so do not hesitate if it is not making sense right now. Right now, I would like for you to imagine a setup where we have a bar magnet above a loop of wire. So when we look at the image on your screen, we can all agree that if we were to draw the X and the Y axis, the loop of wire would lie along the X axis, right? And the magnetic field from the bar magnet would lie along the y-axis. When we say something is normal to, we mean that something is perpendicular to. 
in mathematical terms we mean that the angle between whatever two things that we'll be comparing is 90 degrees i represent the normal to the wire loop in this case with the the, the dotted red line and you see that it is perpendicular to the loop of wire that rectangular shaped wire that means in this instance the 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 normal lies on the y-axis while the loop of wire lies along the x-axis additionally the magnetic field also lies on the y-axis so the magnetic field is represented by the yellow arrow pointing up so from all of that we can agree that the angle between the normal and the magnetic field vector the yellow arrow is zero degrees they are parallel to one another that angle between the magnetic field vector, the yellow arrow, and the normal, the dotted red line, the, the normal, which is the dotted red line, to the loop of wire is the angle theta that we spoke about in the equation for calculating the magnetic flux. When we say something is a vector, we mean that it has magnitude and direction. For example, we can say that we have a magnetic field of four Teslas which is in the, in the clockwise direction. That means that magnetic field has a magnitude of 4 and that its direction is clockwise. I hope that is clear. If then the, that the angle between the normal and the magnetic field is 0 degrees, and from, from mathematics we know that the cosine of the angle of the, of, of the, of, of the zero angle is 1, the magnetic flux is then just calculated by using the product of the magnetic field B and the area of the wire loop A. We can also consider a situation where both the magnet or the magnetic field and the loop of wire lie along the x-axis. Now, the angle between the normal, the dotted red line, to the loop of wire and the magnetic field vector, the yellow arrow, is 90 degrees. They are perpendicular to each other. So theta is 90 degrees in our magnetic flux equation. From mathematics, we know that the cosine of 90 is zero. This means that in this scenario, we would have zero magnetic flux. If the magnetic field and the wire loop are parallel to each other, there would not be a, an induced current in the loop of wire. We have an equation that describes this way of inducing a magnetic field in a wire using a magnetic flux, and that is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It says that the EMF symbol Greek letter epsilon is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux with a symbol Greek letter C or phi, I'm not sure. But then when we move the bar magnet up and down, meaning we have a magnetic flux, we induce a current in the wire. And because now we have a flow of current, it means we also have voltage in flowing in the wire or there's voltage generated. And that is what we refer to as the EMF. So the EMF is the voltage that is generated. This equation means that when the magnetic flux increases, the induced EMF or voltage will also increase. And if it decreases, the induced EMF will also decrease as well. The N in the equation refers to the number of loops. So sometimes you won't just have a single loop. It can be one or 10 loops. So if you have 10 loops, then you will, the value for n would be 1. The important thing here to take note of would be the negative or that minus sign that indicates the, the direction of the EMF or it also implies that the induced EMF tends to oppose the change in magnetic flux. So we'll see how it does that in the next few slides. So let us now imagine ourselves a situation where the bar magnet is moving towards the, the loop of wire. So the direction of the bar magnet is indicated by the black arrow pointing downwards. The south pole is approaching the wire loop. The increasing magnetic field from the magnet induces current to flow in the wire. The induced current in turn induces a second magnetic field in the wire. So now we have two types of magnetic fields. We have the permanent magnetic field from the bar magnet and the induced magnetic field because there was current flowing in the wire. 
we can all agree at this point that the direction of the field line near the south pole is towards the south pole so that is the red arrow that is pointing up according to faraday's law of induced of, according to faraday's law the induced emf will be such that the induced magnetic field opposes the increasing magnetic flux this means the induced magnetic field will set up a field pointing down blue arrow pointing down it is almost like you will set up a sort of a south pole near the approaching south pole of the bar magnet so we have two south poles now and we know that they will repel each other if we use the variation of the right hand rule where your thumb points in the direction of the induced magnetic field which is down in this case and the other four fingers curl in the direction following current flow then we find that the direction of the current to be clockwise so look at the yellow hand on this on the diagram to 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 see how yeah to see how to use the right hand rule now we have a situation where the bar magnet is moving away from the loop of wire and the south pole is moving away from the loop the decreasing magnetic field from the magnet induces a current to flow in the wire the induced current in turn induces a second magnetic field in the loop of wire so now we have two types like before two types of magnetic fields the permanent magnetic field from the bar magnet and the induced magnetic field because of current flow in the wire we can all agree that the direction of the field line at the south pole is towards the south pole red arrow pointing up according to faraday's law the induced emf will be such that the induced magnetic field opposes the decreasing magnetic flux this means the induced magnetic field will set up a field pointing upwards blue arrow pointing up it is almost like we will set up a sort of a north pole near the living south pole of the bar magnet and the two will be attracted to each other if we use the variation of the right hand rule where your thumb is pointing the direction of the induced uh, magnetic field which is up in this case and the other four fingers scale in the direction following the current flow then the direction of the current in this case is counterclockwise as indicated by the yellow hand on the diagram in this instance we have another situation where the bar magnet is moving towards the wire loop but in this case it is the north pole that is approaching the loop of wire the increasing magnetic field from the magnet induces current to flow in the loop of wire the induced current in turn induces a second magnetic field in the wire so now we have two types of magnetic fields the permanent magnetic field from the bar magnet and the induced magnetic magnetic field because of current flowing in the wire we can all agree that the direction of the field at the north pole is away is away so that is the red arrow pointing away or down according to faraday's law the induced emf will be such that the induced magnetic field opposes the increasing magnetic flux this means the induced magnetic field will set up a field pointing upwards blue arrow pointing up it is almost like it will set up a sort of a north pole near the approaching north pole of the bar magnet and the two will repel each other if we use the variation of the right hand rule where the thumb points at the direction of the induced magnetic field which is up in this case and the other four fingers scale in the direction following the current flow then we find that the direction of the current to be counterclockwise is indicated by the yellow hand on the diagram here we have the bar magnet moving away from the loop of wire and the north pole is moving away from from the wire the decreasing magnetic field from the magnet induces current to flow in the wire in the wire loop the induced current in turn induces a second magnetic field in the loop of wire so now we have two types of magnetic fields we have the permanent magnetic field from the bar magnet and the induced magnetic field because of current flowing in the loop of wire we can all agree that the direction of the field line at the north pole is away from the north pole that is the red arrow pointing away or down according to faraday's law the induced emf will be such that the induced magnetic field opposes the decreasing magnetic flux this means that the induced magnetic field will set up a field pointing downwards 
blue arrow pointing down. It is almost like it will set up a sort of a south pole near the living north pole of the bar magnet and the two will attract each other. If we use the variation of the right hand rule where the thumb points at the direction of the induced magnetic field which is down in this case and the other four fingers curl in the direction of the following the current flow then we find the direction of the current to be clockwise as indicated by the yellow hand on the diagram we can do the same thing for a solenoid we explain what a solenoid is in part one of electromagnetism it is basically a wire with a number of coils shown in the figure or the image on your screen we see that we have a bar magnet that is approaching the solenoid the induced magnetic field point towards the approaching north pole look at where my thumb is pointing and the other four fingers curl towards you indicating the direction of the induced current this is the same situation as described in the previous slide with the north pole of the bar magnet approaching and the induced magnetic field set, setting up a sort of a north pole towards or near the north pole of the approaching bar magnet and using the right hand rule we can see that the direction of the current those red linings so that is the current so that it actually indicates the the coils so the the direction of the current on your coils is pointing down if you are looking at the solenoid from the front the north pole of the magnet is now moving away and the induced magnetic field magnetic field sets up a sort of a south pole towards the north pole of the bar magnet using the right hand rule you can see the direction of the current on your coil so that those are the red linings is pointing up if you are looking at the solenoid from the front in this case, the south pole of the bar magnet is moving away and the induced magnetic field sets up a sort of a north pole towards the south pole of the bar magnet. And still using the right hand rule, we can see that the direction of the current, the red lines, linings there of the coils is pointing down if you are looking at the solenoid from the front. The south pole of the bar magnet is approaching and the induced magnetic field sets up a sort of a south pole towards the south pole of the bar magnet. Using the right hand rule, you can see that the direction of the current red linings is pointing upwards if you are looking at the solenoid from the front. I know that might have been a lot to take in. The nice part about video tutorials is that you can always pause, repeat if something is not clear and if after that it is still not clear then it means that i needed to do a better job at explaining so also please do not hesitate to leave a comment and pinpoint what is it that you was not clear you know and if you are uncomfortable doing it publicly uh, i'm gonna leave my social media details the twitter all of these things there and then you can just send me a question and i'll, I'll try by all means to explain it in a way that you can understand it so before i go the prince this principle of inducing current in this fashion by just moving a magnetic field past coils of wire is used actually in the generation of electricity because we can induce a voltage so if you think about it that is a pretty cool application you know and yeah so this is it for for today's <clears throat> video i'm gonna do part three where i will be doing a question maybe two we'll see so that you see how we can use uh, the the magnetic flux equation as well as faraday's law to to determine certain things thank you for watching please do not forget to subscribe and share the video with somebody who might find it useful